Yo, what's up everyone? Today we're going to be doing the 2023 US NCO local exam, um, the electrochemistry section. So this is questions 37 through 42. Let's start with 37. What is the average oxidation state of iron in rebekite, uh, which has a chemical formula of that? Now, the way we're going to do this is by the by knowing the fact that some of these elements are going to have uh, given oxidation numbers. For example, sodium has a uh, oxidation number of plus one. Uh, iron, we don't know what it's going to be, so let's just call it X. Uh, silicon has an oxidation number of plus four. Um, oxygen has a oxidation number of negative two, and hydroxide has a has an oxidation number of negative one. Now, we can use these values because we know that the overall oxidation uh, state of our compound is going to be zero. So it all equals zero. And we have two sodium uh, atoms, and each one is plus one. Um, iron, we have five of them. We don't know what the oxidation number is, so let's call it X. And then silicon, we have eight of them. And each one of them has a oxidation number of plus four. Um, Oxygen, we have 22 of them, it has an oxidation number of negative 2. And hydroxide, we have 2 of them, and that has an oxidation number of negative 1 each. Now, if you simplify all this, let's do 2 times 1 plus uh, 8 times 4 plus 22 times negative 2 uh, plus 2 times negative 1. This will get you that 0 is equal to 5x negative, uh, minus 12. And so 5x is equal to 12, or x is equal to plus 2.4. So that is the average oxidation state of iron, which is answer choice B. Hey everyone, I just want to say if some of these explanations seem a little fast paced to you, then I have a lot of videos on my channel that are more tutorial based. Uh, they can help you learn the content and then come back to these tests to take full advantage of them. Also, if you're enjoying the video, please feel free to leave a like and subscribe. As far as I know, these are the only videos on YouTube that have work solutions for the USNCO. Uh, so a like and a subscription would help it reach more people. Um, and that's it. Thanks, guys. Enjoy the rest of the video. All right, let's move on to question 38. An electrolytic cell is operated for 300 seconds using a current of 1.5 amps, um, from which uh, one molar solution will the smallest mass of metal be deposited. Well, let's figure out what our 3,000 3, seconds and 1.5 amps means. 1.5 amps just means that many coulombs per second. And 300 seconds or 3,000 seconds tells us that uh, 4,500 coulombs of electrons are uh, being put into our solution. Now, let's look through our answer choices. A is cadmium. Cadmium has a charge of plus 2. Um, and cadmium has a molar mass of 112.4 grams per mole. Uh, indium, IN, is also going to have, uh, sorry, it's going to have a charge of plus 3. Um, and that has a molar mass of 114.8 grams per mole. Um, tellurium, uh, thallium, sorry, uh, is, has an oxidation number of plus 2. It has a molar mass of 204.4 grams per mole. And then PB, which is lead, has a plus two charge, and it has a molar mass of 207.2 grams per mole. Now, why is this helpful? Well, we know that the same amount of electrons are flowing into each one of these. So uh, if, if a metal has a charge of oxidation number of plus two, then that means cadmium, thallium, and lead are all going to produce the same number of atoms of all of them. Therefore, we're looking for the one with the smallest mass. Well, if uh, cadmium has the smallest molar mass and you're forming the same number of atoms of cadmium, thallium, and lead, then that means thallium and lead cannot produce the smallest mass of metal. So it's really just between cadmium and uh, indium. Now, indium is has an oxidation number of 3+. plus. So let's do out the math on this. Let's say uh, for cadmium, we have 4,500 coulombs, and let's divide that by two to find out how much cadmium is being produced. Um, so that's gonna be two, uh, two, five, zero. Um, and let's just say it's moles for the time being. Now, if you convert this to mass, let's multiply 2250 times the molar mass of cadmium, which is 112.4. Um, that would produce about uh, 252.9 kilograms of cadmium. Now let's do the same for um, indium. 
Indium is going to be 4,500 coulombs divided by 3, since it has an oxidation number of 3. And so that would produce uh, 1,500, we'll, we'll call it moles. Now, how much does 1,500 moles of indium weigh? Let's do 1,500 times 114.8. And that's going to have a mass of about 172.2 kilograms. So as you can see, um, your indium is going to produce the least mass. Now, it's not a direct, uh, you can't directly translate coulombs to moles. But for, the, for our purposes, it's going to have the similar effect. It's going to show us the relationship that we want. Um, and the relationship is that your indium is going to produce the smallest mass of metal. So our answer is answer choice B. Let's move on to question 39. A galvanic cell using an unknown metal M is arranged as shown below. What can be concluded about this cell? So this cell is a concentration cell, which is a cell that uses the same metal, but varying concentrations of the metal in each uh, half cell. So let's break this down. Let's see what's happening uh, at cell A. As you can see, in cell A, the concentration of your uh, ion is going to be way greater than the concentration of your ions in cell B. Now, the way a concentration cell works is that it goes until it reaches equilibrium. And the equilibrium occurs when the concentrations on both half cells are the same. So what does that mean for half cell A? Well, that means the concentration of your ionic metal is going to have to go down. And which reaction uh, is that? What, what reaction is going to reduce the concentration of uh, M2 plus? Well, it's going to be M2 plus, uh, sorry, M2 plus uh, getting electrons or being reduced to form the metal solid. In B, it's going to be uh, the opposite thing. The concentration is low, so you're going to have to increase the concentration of your metal. Um, so increase in M2 plus. And the way you do that is uh, through the oxidation uh, reaction. So M is going to produce MN2 plus and two electrons. So uh, in A, you are, you are doing the reduction reaction, and the reduction reaction happens in the cathode. In B, you're doing the oxidation reaction, and the oxidation reaction happens in the anode. All right, we haven't even looked at the answer choices. Let's, let's look through our answer choices and see what we can conclude. Half cell A is the cathode. That's what we found out, so that looks right. Let's just leave it. B, half cell B is the cathode. That's not true. We know half cell B is the anode. Uh, C, no current flows in the cell since, since the same metal is used in both half cells. Uh, you can use the same metal. You would just need varying concentrations of your ionic metal, which is exactly what we have, and that's uh, what defines a concentration cell. D, which cell is the cathode, depends on the standard reduction potential of M2+. Uh, that's not true. It's going to depend on which... which uh, uh, solution is going to have the highest or lowest concentration of uh, M2+, plus, the ionic metal. So our answer is answer choice A. Let's move on to question 40. When manganese metal is produced in a solution containing silver 1 ion in acidic solution, uh, metallic silver deposits on the manganese. Which half reactions are taking place? Let's go through our half reactions. One, uh, your ionic silver is getting reduced to form a uh, silver solid. That must be happening. You know that in your solution you have silver uh, plus one um, and it is getting produced into uh, metallic silver, which is solid silver. So you know one has to be a reaction that is occurring. Now for two, you have manganese solid turning into your permanganate ion. And the, th the problem with this is that permanganate is a very strong oxidizing agent. Oxidizing agent. Now, we know that our first reaction is going to have to be the reduction reaction. So having a, producing an extremely oxidizing agent does not make sense for the um, uh, oxidation uh, reaction. What is more favorable is that your MN solid is just going to be produced to MN2 plus and produce two electrons and the reaction would go about that way. So two is not a reaction that we can expect to happen. Uh, therefore, our answer is one only or A. Let's move on to 41. What is the standard cell potential uh, for the following redox reaction? So we're given a redox reaction and a table of uh, reduction cell potential values. So let's go through it. Let's find out what's being oxidized and what is being reduced. If you look at your tellurium, tellurium is going to have an oxidation number of uh, zero since it's just in a solid form. 
But on the product side, tellurium has an oxidation number of plus four. So what does that mean? Well, that means tellurium has been oxidized, oxidized. Um, and then your manganese, manganese goes from an oxidation state of uh, plus seven to an oxidation state of plus two. So manganese has been reduced. Okay, now where does the oxidation reaction occur? Well, the oxidation uh, uh, reaction occurs in the anode. And the reduction reaction happens in the cathode. So how do we calculate a uh, cell potential? Well, we know that our standard cell potential is going to be the uh, standard cell potential at the cathode minus the cell potential at the anode. Now the cathode is your manganese, so that's going to be 1.51, 1.51, and then your anode is your tellurium, which, is, which has a cell potential of 0 0.59. So your overall cell potential is going to be 0 0.92 uh, 92 volts, which is answer choice B. All right, let's move on to question 42, which is the last question. The reduction of O2 to H2O in acidic solution has a standard reduction potential of 1.23 volts. What is the effect on the half cell potential at 25 degrees Celsius when the pH of the solution is decreased by one unit? So we're, we're trying to find the cell potential at uh, non-standard conditions. So that tells us that we should probably use the Nernst equation, which tells you that your cell potential at non-standard conditions is equal to your cell potential at standard conditions minus RT over the number of moles transferred times F Faraday's constant times the natural log of Q, which is the uh, reaction quotient. Now your reaction quotient is calculated the same way as you would your equilibrium constant. And so in this case, it would be the concentration of O2 times the concentration of H plus to the fourth power. Um, that's because uh, water is not included because it's a liquid and uh, we use four because these are your half cell uh, equations. So we can just uh, take the coefficients and use them as exponents. Now, at standard, uh, at standard conditions, we know that this entire value here has to equal zero. And the way you get that to equal zero is if your natural log of Q is equal to zero. Um, if your natural log of Q is equal to zero, then that means you're going to be at equilibrium, uh, which means that your Q is equal to one. Um, and therefore, at initial conditions, our Q should have a value of one. You can make up uh, initial concentration values uh, using that. So if O2 had an initial concentration of one molar and H plus had an initial concentration of one molar, then your Q would be uh, one, which means this entire thing would equal zero. So we can use this as initial conditions. We're asked to find the cell potential when the pH of the solution is decreased by one unit. If pH is decreased by one unit, so one decrease in pH, uh, one decrease in change in pH of uh, one is equal to a change in H plus concentration of times 10. That's uh, that since a pH, the pH is a logarithmic scale. If you decrease the pH by um, one unit, then that means you're increasing the concentration of H plus uh, by 10. So our final concentrations uh, are going to be O2 is not going to change. It's going to be one molar. That should say final. Uh, it's not going to change. It's going to be one molar. But H plus final is going to equal 10 molar. Again, since you're decreasing pH by one, then that means your H plus concentration has to uh, increase by times 10. Um, so it would be 10 molar. Now we can use this to calculate our uh, reaction quotient. So Q is equal to one over the concentration of oxygen, which is going to be one molar times the, con the final concentration of H plus, which is 10 molar to the fourth power. Um, and so our Q that we want to use is going to be one over 10 to the fourth. Um, and from here on, I'm just going to neglect units for simplicity. So let's plug this all back into our uh, Nernst equation. So our cell potential is going to equal our standard cell potential, which we're told is 1.23 volts, 1.23 minus R, which we want to use uh, 8.3145 here, uh, times T, which is the temperature in Kelvin. We're told it occurs at 25 degrees Celsius, which is 298 Kelvin, uh, over N, which is the number of moles of electrons transferred, um, in this case, it's going to be four times Faraday's constant, which is 96,500 
times the natural log of q, which we just calculated as 1 over 10 to the fourth. Now, if you plug this into your calculator, so uh, 1.23 time, uh, minus um, 1, uh, 8.3145 times 298 Kelvin over 4 uh, moles of electrons times Faraday's constant and then times the natural log of RQ which is 10 to the negative fourth. Our final cell potential is going to be 1.289 volts. All right, that's cool. Let's look at our answer choices to see which one makes the most sense. Now, there's two that we can get rid of. We know that the cell potential does not decrease, so we can get rid of A and C. Uh, B says the reduction potential, uh, the uh, potential increases by 236 millivolts, and D says it increases by 59 millivolts. Well, if you subtract uh, your final, your uh, non-standard cell potential minus your initial standard cell potential, um, that change, your change in E, is uh is going to be uh 0 0.059 volts which is 59 millivolts remember uh, milli just means 10 to the negative 3 so 59 millivolts is going to be 59 times 10 to the negative 3 which is 0 0.059 volts so our cell potential increases by 59 millivolts so our answer is answer choice d all right, that was the electrochemistry section of the 2023 US NCO local exam. I hope this was helpful. I hope you were able to learn something. Um, thank you for watching, and I'll see you later. Peace.